Hi there, this is a GCSEP revision video on the topic of mechanics of breathing, a part of the cardiorespiratory system, and we're using AQA as our exam board for reference. So the first thing we need to explore is what inspiration and expiration looks like with regards to the mechanics, and then to consider the differences at rest and during exercise. So when we are inspiring, when we're breathing in, the intercostal muscles contract and pull the rib cage up and out. So we've got the chest cavity increasing in size and it's specifically the external intercostal muscles, if we want to be as specific as possible, that will be contracting. The diaphragm also flattens. So you can see at the bottom here that we have a flattening diaphragm which goes outwards as well as the external intercostal muscles contracting, enabling the chest cavity to get bigger and that causes the pressure in the lungs to fall. So air is moving into the lungs from the outside pressure which is higher from high to low. So from the outside air uh, or atmosphere which has higher pressure to the lungs which has lower pressure. So the chest cavity will change in shape. Now when we're expiring or breathing out, again in this case, the intercostal muscles will relax, so the rib cage will return to normal. So in this case, it's imagining that when you are at rest, it's like breathing into or blowing into a balloon. When you're expiring, you effectively just let go. Everything just starts to relax. So when you inspire at rest, the external intercostal muscles of the diaphragm will contract, enabling the chest cavity to increase in size. Once you are expiring or the air is going out of the body, all that happens is you let your finger off the balloon and everything relaxes, enabling the air to leave. So the chest cavity in this case gets smaller. Obviously, we've got the diaphragm that is now in a dome shape as such. It's relaxed, it's moved up, and we've got the external intercostal muscles, which now have also relaxed, enabling the chest cavity to get smaller. Air, of course, therefore, flows out of the lungs because we are moving now from the higher pressure in the lungs to the lower pressure that's outside. So during periods of exercise, expiration becomes more active, but at rest, it's quite passive. So if you think about the spirometer trace, when we looked at spirometer traces in a previous video, you'll notice that tidal volume is your breathing at rest or your normal breathing rate. Here, we are breathing without any undue stress on the body. OK, so the respiratory system is vital during sport. We need to get oxygenated blood to the, the muscles that need it, the active working muscles. So therefore, the mechanics are ever so slightly different at rest compared to when we are exercising. So in terms of the mechanics, if we summarise it, the big thing to understand is when we are exercising, the process is deeper. We're breathing deeper because we need to get more oxygen into the body. We're taking more air into the body and it's more frequent. Again, think of that spirometer trace. The spirometer trace gets bigger. OK, we're using or we're, we're kind of eating into our reserve volumes, our inspiratory and expiratory reserve volumes. So therefore, we're breathing more often and we're taking deeper breaths in because we're exercising and the body needs that oxygenated blood to get to the active, work, active working muscles. So at rest, as we discussed, the diaphragm contracts or flattens and the external intercostal muscles contract. When we are breathing out, and this is at rest, so we're just talking about rest at the moment, this is like letting go of a balloon. So the diaphragm, again, when we're exercise, when we're breathing in, sorry, it contracts. When we are expiring, it just relaxes, and so does the external intercostal muscles. On most exam answers, you'll just see intercostal muscles, but if we want to be specific, we need to make sure we're aware that it's the external intercostals. Now, when we're exercising, notice that some of the processes are the same. The diaphragm still contracts, the external intercostal muscles still contract, but now we need to get more oxygen into the body. We need to ensure that that oxygen is getting to where it's needed, so it becomes a more active process. So now we get the contraction of the sternocleidomastoid, OK, that's the muscle that's at the top into the neck. So it's that muscle in here. Uh, the scalene contracts, which is where the top rib and the sternum are. So we've got that contraction there, too. And we've got the pectoral muscles that will be contracting again, trying to enable more oxygen to get into the body. In terms of the exam board, the mark scheme will only refer to the abdominals contracting when we are expiring but it's important that we do also know if we want to be as specific as possible that the internal intercostal muscles will be contracting trying to ensure that we get the chest cavity almost forcing the air out so the areas around the chest cavity will be working to ensure that we 
have carbon dioxide leaving the body, enabling that oxygen to then come back in at a quicker pace or rate. So big things to take out from this is both at rest and exercise, both the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles contract. When we are at rest, effectively, the external intercostal muscles and the diaphragm just let go, they relax. When we are exercising and inspiring, the sternocleidomastoid, scalenes and pectoral muscles contract. And when we are expiring, it's the abdominals that's the main process at force. So let's try and apply this. So define inhalation. OK, as always, we box that keyword um, and we're looking at inhalation here as it takes place. So refer to the intercostal muscles, rib cage and diaphragm in your answer. And I'm going to underline inhalation because it's the closest to mechanics of breathing. So we need to have a definition, firstly, of inhalation, which will be something like air coming into the body uh, or the intake of air into the lungs. And then we need to refer to the intercostal muscles, rib cage and diaphragm. Notice it just says intercostal muscles, not external intercostal muscles. So here we go. We have one mark A or one for inhalation, which is the intake of air into the lungs. That's what we expected. The diaphragm contracts. We know that we've got contraction of the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles contract. If you write the word external at the front there, you won't be in any way penalised. And the rib cage will move up and out so that the chest cavity can become larger. Four quite easy marks. Explain how air pressure changes occur in the chest cavity. Let's box that. Um, to allow exhalation to take place. Refer to, again, we need to look at the inter, uh, the intercostal muscle, sorry, the rib cage and the diaphragm. So we're looking at the chest cavity. Changes to the chest cavity during the process of exhalation. So again, four marks. The diaphragm relaxes. Remember that we're talking here um, chest cavity allowing exhalation to take place. So we've got the relaxation of the diaphragm. So we get it to return to that dome shape from a flat shape. We've got the external intercostal muscles that are relaxing. The chest cavity decreases. We know that in exhalation, the chest cavity is going to reduce in size and volume, uh, and the pressure will also increase in exhalation. So again, most of the processes are being kind of covered here, and we are referring specifically to rest because it doesn't talk about exercise. It's very different if we're talking about exercise, and the exam question will refer to that. Adam plays badminton every week at his local leisure centre. How? Not usually seeing that as a key word, but anyway, mechanics of breathing, I know it does include the word Adam in there, change during inhalation as a result of exercise. How is kind of tell me, uh, it's not a brilliant keyword there, and again, it won't usually be seen in an exam answer, but we've got two marks here. So one is for the expansion of the lungs during exercise, and the second is how. So sternocleidomastoid and pectorals. Remember, we've got exercise, so we need to refer to those extra processes. It's asking about exercise, so therefore the external intercostal muscles and diaphragm take place in both. It wants to know about the differences. So to summarise this process, you need to have a clear understanding of the fact that breathing is an active process during exercise, but in particular, exhalation during rest is a passive process. It's just like letting go of that balloon. Air moves from high pressure to low pressure, regardless of whether we're talking about rest or during exercise. And during exercise, breathing is deeper and more frequent. And we could also relate that to our spirometer traces, whereby that line will be closer together and it will increase in size, eating into that inspiratory and expiratory reserve volume.